Okay. All right. So, um, like Doug mentioned, we don't have a lot on the agenda, but we do have um, agenda analysis or adoption of the agenda. So, if there's anything you guys want to move up or discuss with the consensus of the commission committee, sorry, that's that's up to y'all. Um, but other than that, we're just doing communications and uh, some other. Th communications from you to us too so any anybody have any concerns about that i know at the beginning of the year i think uh, we've got to prepare for um accomplishments of 2021 so nancy you'll be responsible for if you're for uh, giving a report to the city commission or or potentially anyone else Obviously, with COVID, there was a, a lot going on that distracted people this year. But at the same time, I think the commission's really interested to see what what all the committees were able to do in spite of all of that. We actually got some stuff done. I mean, yeah, we, right. I remember when the Heritage Tree Code actually went into effect? I think it was this year, and then you know we helped revamp the the street the the tree removal thing that. Yep. On here, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's the first thing up. So, yeah. and there was a one other communication that we wanted to talk about, which is a, a you know a discuss, discussion about the golf course and and the heritage tree designations there. So it'd be great to hear from you, Nancy, and anybody else who has been out yeah. there. Yeah, Brett and I went to the, the I can't remember their name. Um, the halls. Halls. Yeah, we went. We went and met with them. Um, and I can talk about that. And then um, Mike and I are going out early Jan, the first week of January, we're going to go out to the golf course because that's just been, you know, hard to get times, you know, with me being in McMinnville four days a week. And then we had a time set and there was supposed to be a big windstorm that it turned out didn't really amount to anything, but you know. It did blow 25 miles an hour for a short amount of time. Yeah, yeah. I think it did in the morning and not in the afternoon, but you right. know. I know as I, I still get, I, I signed up for FEMA alerts when the mm. fires were around and I still get FEMA alerts. I frequently get them after I've driven to McMinnville through the thick fog, I get a FEMA alert <laughs> warning me that there's a thick fog advisory. And I go, I could have told you that an hour ago. <laughs> 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 They're a little late. But <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll talk about those when we get to the reports. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's jump into that then. Um, first thing I wanted to tell you about uh, was the uh, city commission adopted resolution 20-33, which is the policy with respect to removal <laughs> of uh, trees by city staff or tree removal on city owned land. Um, and so you've got a copy of the adopted policy in your packet. Um, the uh, policy is also posted on the city website. So I'm going to just help you. I'm going to show you where everything's at um, so that you can see where to tell people when they want to sign up for the uh, notifications and things. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. You should see the pl planning homepage. Mm -hmm. You can probably mm -hmm. see a, I've got a lot going on here. Uh, move that over there. Move that over there. Okay. And uh, there's a news item on the homepage about this. So you can click on that as well. So city tree removal notices. If you click on that, it'll tell you briefly about what the, the resolution that just passed. And then you would click on go to city tree removal notices. And this page is bookmarked um, down on the right side of the big blue menu bar here. We have a menu called public notices, menu item called public notices. And that includes city tree removal notices. But what this page does is gives people a jumping off point to subscribe. So, so if you subscribe here, you click this link it works and they punch in your email address and hit su subscribe and that way you'll every sunday there will be a emailing 
and if there is a notice posted that previous week, um, there'll be a link to those notices. So every Sunday that would be done. Um, and then to see the current notices, we added a project type under the city projects map. So this is the project's homepage, which you can link to directly from the city homepage under projects. So when you're on this, it comes up with every project that's out there. And what you need to do is uh, we're going to add a description on this heading here. And the, the website uh, company is working on that right now. So that it explains to people from this page what the project types are. But to see city tree removal notices, you click on project type, click on that, hit apply. And I think all we have right now is a test. Um, so it's zoomed way out. <laughs> and I don't know why it's on this particular location, but it says test project. And if you click on it, what it's going to have is um, there's a couple more, three more fields that will be added to this. But it'll have the uh, neighborhood, it'll have the location. It'll have a lot more information, including files added to the bottom of it. Um, the files will include um, the arborist reports if those are required, um, an alternatives analysis section. So there'll be a, a discussion about what the alternatives to removal were that were considered and a decision about that. And then um, the notice deadline. Uh, then the deadline to comment on it would be here, 14 days. Um, and it'll the fields that we're going to add are whether the size of the tree triggers city commission uh, uh, approval or not. So if it's over the 40, 40 inch diameter, uh, it'll say city commission re approval required, yes, no. Um, and then we'll also have um, the Fe the feasibility of wood reuse um, on here as well. So this is active, it's up, the policy is in effect. And um, I know that a few people have signed up for it already. So um, the other thing I wanted to get to was the overview of the of the policy. So as you know, we're primarily using the heritage tree list as the basis for requiring additional notification. Um, certain trees are exempt from the policy, even if they meet the heritage tree requirements. And that includes if they meet the definition of an immediate hazard and need to be removed or have already fallen. Um, but they're still required to get the necessary permits from the planning division um, in, the, in those situations. Um, we have, the policy requires that there's an explanation as to why the tree is being removed as well as an analysis of the removal and any alternatives to removal, which would be either an arborist report or an internal staff review panel. And that internal staff review panel would be um, part of the public notice. So uh, arborist re review is required for all trees over a certain size. Um, the tree notice, the notice itself would be on the website as well as placed on the tree. Um, and there are stipulations about how big the notice is and what language it contains and that it cannot be a, uh, uh, a screw or a nail. It has to be tied to the tree with wire or twine. Um, and then un unresolved questions or concerns from the public during the 14 day period would be elevated to the city manager's office. City commission will review all trees 40 inches or larger. Um, and uh, that would be on the city commission consent agenda uh, at this point in time. And uh, the wood of healthy trees 25 inches or greater must be reused if it's healthy and it's feasible. And then there's uh, language in the policy about us establishing the, uh, an annual budget to support tree retention. Um, 
And we're, it also stipulates that you cannot pay a fee in lieu for uh, mitigation plantings associated removal of extremely large trees. So it must be plantings. Um, are there any questions about this? Oh, I should mention too that this is in addition to the existing permit requirements. So city staff, all the city staff who are responsible for managing trees in the city from public works and parks are going to be uh, educated about this. And we've already started that process. Um, so they will have to fill, fill out this, this application here. Um, which is called a city staff application for removal of significant public trees. Um, and that talks about the permit requirements, the applicability, it has the table in it, what the exemptions are. And if the tree is not exempt, they have to continue filling out this form, um, documenting the alternatives to removal. Um, and that would also talk about um, rough cost estimates of the alternatives. There's up to three alternatives considered. And then a conclusion or recommended course of action and the person, the name of the staff who completed that analysis. And once that is done, next step is the internal review or arborist review. So option one is providing a certified arborist report. Option two is a staff assessment consisting of at least two uh, staff members from parks or and public works and one from planning. Um, and then the notice itself, a discussion about how that needs to be done and a discussion about the city manager's review for unresolved situation. City manager can cease the tree removal process. Um, and then the other requirements including reuse and repurposing of wood so city staff will have to complete this form in addition to their regular permitting, but it is a very step-by-step -step and trans uh, transparent process, so. I got a couple questions, Pete. Yeah. Um, in the tree removal, it's, you said it's, you can't have payment in lieu of planting? For certain sizes of trees, um, the city commission stipulated that um, so there would need to be just the full complement of replanting rather than paying a fee in lieu. And I think they would want to, you know, the city commission in their purview at that point in time would, you know, try to would would probably weigh in on the size of tree to be replanted and that sort of thing. Uh, mm. I mean, I, the only experience I've had was when we lost a tree in our in our parking strip and and uh, half of it, and you gave the permit to remove the rest of it. And you had, I had a, I had I had to plant two trees. Yeah, um, yeah but. Um, what is is the planting to be done in the same location as the tree removal? And, and is it still a certain number of trees for one loss? Well, that kind of ties back into the actual code requirements. Um, so uh, if your tree removal is on a tax lot that's owned by the city, the code requirement is that the replanting be on on site to the extent practicable. And then there are alternatives to that. Um, if it's in public right of way, uh, we have to pay attention to spacing requirements. Um, but again, the priority is on replanting in that location if, it, if there's sufficient space. So and all of these are for within city right of way or with on, on city property? So it's, if, it's a, if it's a tree removal in city right of way by city staff, the policy applies. If it's tree removal on a city tax lot like the library or the swimming pool, the policy applies. The policy does not apply to private landowners yeah. who are removing street trees. They would go through our standard permitting process. Okay. And then people who are removing 
trees on commercial property, a multifamily project are subject to our tree removal permit for those kinds of properties as well, which is, uh, we call that a type one minor site plan application with a landscaping review or a tree removal review. Uh, if, it, if the uh, tree is not part of a formally planted landscape. And a lot of times we have commercial sites which have trees growing in them, but they're um, not considered a parking lot tree because we have designations of trees, you know, and so depending on the, on the uh, where the tree is, um, you know, they have to maintain a certain amount of landscaping in a parking lot. They have to maintain a minimum percentage of landscaping on site and uh, we try to make sure that the trees that were originally part of the approved landscaping plan are, are uh, replaced if they're removed. And that's what the, okay. the type one minor site plan process is for. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So those, those things are still in effect. You know, this is just an additional process for notification for, for city tree, for city staff. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, actually, Pete, I do have a question real quick. Sure. Um, I, was, I was just wondering uh, if we have any notion of how we are going to reuse mm. um, <laughs> the, the, the removed material from these trees. I haven't, uh, I mean, is this, it's a great question. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I was just wondering if we could have, make it available to the public first for anybody who would step forward and um, be willing to take it. There's been some very informal discussions by staff, and I don't, I haven't been privy to other discussions um, about making that wood available as firewood for the public and that sort of thing, depending mm -hmm. on if it's not dimensional or it can't be used for dimensional lumber or some other kind of art project or things like that. But I can fill in for some yeah. of that. Thank you. Um, there's, <laughs> there's been a lot of discussions, so. Um, the thought process is to, if we can do something with the wood, we have been thinking about creating partnerships if we can for, with woodworking groups or the high school for a wood shop or that kind of thing. Um, and then also having them sign up for notification when there is tree removal so they know when things are coming um, mm -hmm. ahead of time. And then, um, so the priority is to do that if we can, and then if not, it's so expensive to plane it and use it for furniture, things like that for city use. So most of them may be turning into firewood. Um, mm -hmm. We do have places where we store firewood for the public use um, sometimes when we have it available. And um, it used to be at Clackamas Park and now I think it's up near um, right in front of on um, Claremont Way, uh, Malala. Um, so we would continue sort of with that scheme of creating, um, we wouldn't split the firewood, but we would just have rounds um, for the public to use. And then I think at one point Parks was renting out a splitter for the public to use to split the rounds. So they have experience um, giving firewood to the public and whatever partnerships we could create or whoever we can encourage to sign up for the tree removals will then know when wood will happen because um, they could see if it's healthy enough to be reused um, and what our plan is for reuse. Well, if I could add my two cents, um, if storage isn't too much of a hassle for the city, I think it would be well worth it to save any good specimens, you know, just let there over time because yeah, the cost of, of, of planning it and preparing it is expensive, but um, in those opportunities when you can actually use it, it's, it's good to have that on hand and it's a lot cheaper than a prefabricated alternative for something like a bench or a play feature. I mean, for instance, we're putting in three, uh, you know, uh, cleaned logs as a play feature in La Tourette Park right now. So it might be well worth it just to kind of store that away rather than, you know, be too hasty and chop it up. That's a good point. We can communicate that back to parks and public works. Um, they're in transition among places. So at the moment, there's lots of storage. <laughs> so. Excellent. I'm going to throw in just something here. Uh, <clears throat> if the, you know, if the trees aren't really usable, 
or people don't want them for firewood. Uh, they're oftentimes used in the in the natural environment for shelter, or uh, we use them in streams and so forth to create pools and so forth. So um, that's something that I wouldn't put it. You know, I would put it as a possibility. I wouldn't write it up because you'd have to work with a a group that does that kind of thing. But watershed councils do, and so those would be those would be trees that are, uh, you know, not really salvageable for any purpose. The Parks Department did express an interest about trying to leave habitat in place as well, if it made sense to do so. So that I have a sense that we'll probably do all sorts of things. But yeah, no, that's a good point. Okay. So, um, next up, um, give you an update on the OC 2040 comprehensive plan update. So we are still uh, working on uh, the visioning process. Um, we're still getting comments um, through the website and people are still uh, free to conduct community conversations using the kit that we've posted online. Um, I anticipate that we will be continuing that process through through January. Um, and the first pro this sorry, the fourth project advisory team meeting that we're going to have is in January 27th, which will and at that meeting, we're actually going to be diving into the results that we've received from the online survey and the other questionnaires that we've been mailing out and the various posters that we have posted around town. Uh, so our consultants are going to be compiling that information and bringing it back to the project advisory team for um, some some studied and some studied review um, and beginning to draft the vision statement. Um, and then so from that point forward, we will be having uh, a project advisory team every month. Um, and we anticipate another 10 of those at least uh, through through the uh, next stage of the process. Um, so moving into drafting the comprehensive plan itself, uh, that's going to take us most of 2021. Um, we'll be writing uh, chapters with input from the public and doing work sessions and that sort of thing. Um, because of uh, certain things that have delayed the process, we haven't got an updated schedule for you online just yet but we will be doing that soon. Um, there are a couple of vacancies on our project advisory team that I wanna let you know, let you know about. Um, we're looking for a uh, advocate for uh, people with physical disabilities. And uh, we've also, we're also looking for a representative from Clackamas Community College, which is kind of a specific um, vacancy that we have. Um, and we want to have, and I believe that Chris is working on uh, some separate community conversations with you all, which is great. Um, and uh, we'll we'll be able to hear from from him when those are complete. Um, the website has some updates uh, on it. Um, the project advisory team page has been moved, so it's on its own page now, um, and. Uh, there are, I would say, um, the best way to encourage people to sign up and get involved in the process right now is still to go to the mailing list on the website and sign up that way. Um, and that way they'll get updates whenever we're, we're mailing them out. Um, we have had over 850 responses on our survey so far. So things are doing good and we just completed a multifamily mail out to over 4,000 houses, multifamily project uh, properties within the urban growth boundary. Mm -hmm. um, so I uh, haven't seen anything back from those yet. Um, so it, things are moving along. Um, does anybody have any questions about the comprehensive plan process? Okay. Um, update on 2021 and Arbor Day, things are very much up in the air given COVID. They had to cancel Arbor Day this year and they had to cancel the Oregon City Enhancement Day uh, as well. 
So we don't know yet whether or not um, we'll be having a, a uh, public Arbor Day celebration in April uh, in 2021. Um, but we are hopefully anticipating to being able to do uh, Friends of Trees pruning event sometime in 2021, which would be a, a, a seminar on pruning for homeowners to learn how to prune, prune their street trees and their, and their fruit trees and that sort of thing. Um, and then uh, moving into fall of 2021, hopefully we'll be back to normal and we can plan for a neighborhood planting event with participation from the entire community. Um, so that's, that's where that's at. Um, and now I think we wanted to talk about um, the heritage tree uh, situation on, on the Hall's property. And can I ask, mm -hmm. I have a question about this year's Arbor Day stuff. We were supposed to get the ginkgos. Um, did those ever get planted or did that get? Uh, yeah, I believe they did plant those. Um, and uh, there was a small celebration was it the Pioneer Center that they did that, Laura? I can't remember. I thought they were at the down at the wagon train. At the wagon, yeah. <laughs> the place is called. <laughs> I don't. I I can't remember, but they did get planted. Yes. Okay. Um, John Waverly uh, is the best person to talk to about that. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I can talk about the the hall property. Yeah. Um, so Trent and I went out there um, Friday afternoon, a few weeks ago, probably about a month ago now. Um, and we met with the, the property owners and um, walked over to their area where there's a spring. Um, and it looks like it's probably a year round spring. I don't think there's that much water coming out of it in the summer but when we were there it had been raining and so there actually was a nice little creek flowing down there um the property has been dairy it's had dairy cows on it for a number of years and so you know there's good and bad in that it's it it's been eaten and trampled a lot but they've also eaten a lot of the blackberries so you know you <laughs> The wow. property line where the neighbors have their half and it was just solid Himalayan blackberries. And that one was actually relatively open. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, I guess the cows are doing some good here. Wow. But we looked at, you know, we looked at trees inside of it. It's a fairly dense forest. It had a lot of really nice cedars, um, but it's dense enough. And it's also the, the part we were walking around where the spring is and the creek, that's in a protected area. That's part of the area that's already set aside because it's a natural area and next to the water and stuff. And so we decided that it wouldn't make sense to designate heritage trees in there since it's already protected and they don't need any more protection. And, and given the density of the trees, we were pretty sure that a lot of those trees were gonna naturally go down and the normal thinning process. And so it just, that didn't make sense. But outside in the field, a little bit away from them, there were a couple of relatively big dug firs that were pretty nice. So we did take um, DBHs of that. I don't know where I've got my book somewhere, but I wrote down the DBHs. Trent actually took GPS coordinates and pictures of them, and, but we got like estimated heights and DBHs and, and, uh, and they were fairly, fairly nice trees. And so the property owners may designate one or there were three trees. One of them looked like it had damage. It had a lot of sap dripping down from it. So we weren't mm -hmm. sure about the health of that. But the other two looked pretty good. So they may designate those. Mm -hmm. And then they took us because they wanted us to see these other trees that they had. They were, they were just fun to be around. <laughs> great like Trent and I are walking down this hill and they're going, be careful, it's muddy. And he steps off and goes down like oh, about a <laughs> hole in the mud because it was like, it's a spring. It's, so and I did the same thing, but I didn't quite go quite to my ankle. You know, I had my hiking boots on, I didn't care. Um, but, <laughs> but we were traipsing around down there. We were having a great time. And it was like a beautiful afternoon. So yeah, sunny and warm. And like, oh, this is good. I like this because it was supposed to rain all day so we figured we were going to be out there in a rain gear and then it was beautiful so then they took us to the runway 
which I didn't even know there was an airport there, which is what I know, but you know, it's, it's a grass landing strip. And so mm -hmm. we drove down the runway to look at these trees. They have a huge cottonwood that they are very proud of. They really like that cottonwood. It's very old, it's very nice. Um, but then you get down there and, and you can tell somebody planted Doug first in, I think somebody had a, he had a picture of them when they were relatively small. So we're thinking they're probably about 60, 70 years old. Mm -hmm. maybe a little older, but they're, they're decent sized Doug firs and some of them are really nice. Um, and apparently he's had conversations with somebody from the school district who was talking about buying that property. I don't think that's part of the subdivision. I think this is a different thing, but they were talking about buying that property and putting like a football field and a stalker st stalker field, which would be fine with me because the football field's here by my house and it's just insane that the school's up there and I've got to do with the football. But <laughs> <laughs> although homecoming parade every every year is nice. I like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know you get the good and the bad. But um, so anyway, they're talking about doing the football field and a soccer field and maybe a small like an elementary school or something up on that mm. property. Um, and they were like, probably you know initially they were looking at the end where the big Doug furs were and then they realized he said that well that's a site it goes down and it goes downhill and it's uh, so they decided to put it further up which doesn't have the big Doug furs but the guy from the school district was walking around going he was all excited by all the big Doug furs and thought that'd be a really good thing to keep and for the students to be exposed to and and so you know the property owners were really excited about potentially uh nominating them to be a heritage grove yeah okay. so we were telling them we didn't do the dbhs of those but you know we kind of showed them how to do it i i offered to to send dd to them if they wanted some help i know that she'd be out there in a heartbeat and and help them all they wanted and you know she she'd be great at helping them get that app and all of the stuff they need on that app so sure i sent them an email with, help with contact that. information i did not give her their contact information yeah <laughs> You know, she'd be in their face and, and they seem really private people and I didn't want to do that to them, but I did yeah. offer that and, you know, and Trent okay. and I both said we could come back out if they wanted to. They didn't take yeah, it. well, I'm, so that I'm was really happy fun. to help I mean, too, that's really so. neat too. Driving down the runway, you know, <laughs> and then we're out there and this plane comes and lands, we're like, Whoa. Really? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Oh, <geez. laughs> Luckily we were off to the sides so <laughs> yeah. in the little runway and we were far enough at the end of it that we were okay, but it was still kind of like oh, I'm driving back one. <laughs> with the FAA. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a non. It's, it's a, a private thing, yeah, and yeah. it doesn't have a. You know, it's just a little grass airstrip. Yeah. But, um, and then um, the other property is Mike and I are supposed to go out. What date is January? You just sent me an email. Fifth. Yeah. I knew it was that first week. <laughs> like I didn't put on my calendar. I don't. Have a, I don't have a new calendar yet. <laughs> I ordered some from Powell's and they haven't come. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, a Tuesday. Yeah, so we will be doing it before our next meeting. Yeah. Oh, you would? Looks like it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Our meeting so done. we're going to go out there and, and look at those trees. I mean, there's tons of trees, so I have no idea. You know, there's no way that we can physically go out and measure the DBH of all of those trees. But, you know, I think walking around with them and giving some ideas. And I'll, I'll put them in contact with Dee if they want help. Okay. You know, go out in a heartbeat and do... And she's got all the time in the world seemingly to go <laughs> anything about heritage trees and she's on it. So, <laughs> so, yeah. but, you know, but I think it still would be good to go look around. I mean, so many of those trees that were right next to the, you know, right at the edge of the golf course were huge they were cool. and they had tagged them and they already had a, um, I, if I, if, you know, you sent the, um, inventory, they had an inventory done a few years back. Oh, and okay. they had DBHs and stuff. It's really hard. The, the, the thing's so small, and I saw so I would have to blow it up, and I would go oh, right. the corners yeah. of it. But, mm -hmm. but there's, I mean, they're big trees. They're really big Doug firs, which would be really cool. And there's a bunch of, there's some incense cedars that look pretty nice out there. And so, you know, and there may be other things along the golf course that, that and, and I think her dad, her grandfather or somebody planted a lot of them. And so, you know, they have family significance. So. Mm -hmm. Is um is there much habitat associated yes. with that? No. So no, and so that's what we Carol, originally right. went. Yeah, we originally went out to see if we wanted to to do some further protection on the the property past that, but what we found was that it's all secondary growth because it had all been cut in probably the 60s or 70s. Well, I think so again, it, the 90s too. 
it's, yeah yeah it's some of it's in the 90s because some of it was only like 20 something years old and it was just mm -hmm. there wasn't anything spectacular it was you know big leaf maple and some cedars and but not many of those and you know lots of hawthorns and filberts and and so mm -hmm. it, it was just it was typical second growth and it, it didn't really seem like it was worth putting special things in to preserve that area of property but I think it would be really good to preserve those big trees mm -hmm. yeah cool we well, could um print the survey on a really big you know, plotter paper and mail it to you guys. So when you're there, awesome. you can draw oh, whatever trees. Awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, blow it up. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing is that Pete is going to take over this project um, for the heritage designation for yeah, both pieces of that. So. Oh, cool. Yep. cool. So thanks for doing all the hard work. <laughs> Just kidding. It's very hard. We were, Grant and I were having fun. Like, other, than, other than, you know, we have these directions like park in the high school and then safely cross Beaver Creek Road at four o'clock. Um, That's the hard on work. Friday and we're looking at each other going, how in the world? <laughs> Luckily there were little bricks to be running across. <laughs> we didn't get killed. So we were good. We figured right. it was really bad. We'd walk down to the light. Okay. We well, I'd love I, to come out with you. Yeah. And I just want to acknowledge, I really appreciate NRC because I think there's very, there, not every committee can, has expertise to have committee members go out there, work directly with the public, figure out what trees are appropriate and help people through a designation process. So I think it, it speaks a lot to you guys and everyone's willingness to get out there, take a look, and um, it's impressive to see um, to see you guys uh, do this work. So thank you. you no, know, when you, when you have a bunch of field ecologists, there's nothing I'd rather do than go out in the field. <laughs> <laughs> Hate grading paper. Let me go outside. <laughs> I did love that idea that Devin had too about um, you know going to coffee shops and putting like donation boxes out so i think that's an uh, awesome idea yeah yeah something along those can keep following up on that yeah yeah well once we can go out to coffee houses yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> yep all right i linfield supposedly going back face to face and they moved they got rid of january court january like it's a winter block this is usually the month and then we start early February. They got rid of it so they could move spring up into the middle of January, which is going to be right after the peak after the holidays. <laughs> I'm just like, I am not going face to face. There's no way. <laughs> <There is> no <laughs> way. <laughs> just get a nice portrait sticker and put it up there. My last day live at Linfield. It's the last lab. It's like three in the afternoon. I talked to this student, you know, just a few feet away. We have masks on. Everybody was really good about wearing masks. And we didn't have too many cases there. But as I'm walking away, she goes, oh, yeah, my two sweet mates tested positive. Oh, geez. And, and they had symptoms for three days, didn't bother to tell anybody. Um, and then, yeah. And then I'm like, why aren't you in quarantine? She goes, I don't know. We share a bathroom, but I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it makes your mind boggle so it really makes me want to go face to face with anybody <laughs> it's scary it was really scary you yeah. know and and i had three students who had been around people who had tested positive who weren't in quarantine yeah it's gonna be a tough winter yeah it, it already is this has been really bad yeah mm -hmm. so any other reports from members yeah, I got a couple of things. <clears throat> um, the Natural Resource Committee has gotten funding uh, uh, to to put wood in uh, Newell Creek Canyon. That'll happen this next year. Uh, it'll be the area Newell Creek Canyon crosses the highway close to uh, Moala, mm. and uh, then it goes down that one side, and then it crosses back. That area where it crosses back all the way to Abernathy, including some parts of Abernathy Creek, we'll be putting in uh, wood into the streams uh, to create pools and so forth for both uh, spawning purposes and, and salmon uh, rearing purposes. Um, 
Newell Creek is one of the cool water uh, tributaries into Abernathy. Abernathy warms up quite a bit during the summer, but there are uh, cool refuges that are along it. The other project that uh, we will be getting funding for to do probably in 2022 uh, is actually doing the same kind of work plus revegetation with a private property owner where the Holcomb Creek comes into Abernathy. And uh, uh, Holcomb Creek can serve also as a cold water, cool water refuge for, for Abernathy Creek as well. There's a big lake, uh, dam artificial lake off of NRC Road on Abernathy. And uh, it, it heats up in the summertime. And uh, the water coming out from, from that lake is to be 10, 15 degrees warmer than the water entering it. But fortunately, we do have these uh, streams down, uh, down uh, that come into Abernathy below that point and eventually start cooling the wa water down and lower down on Abernathy Creek. And those are areas we're going to be concentrating. Mm -hmm. Great. Rita yeah. gave a presentation to the CIC about the Holcomb Creek. Right. And, uh, just the other night. Right. Yeah. The Parks Department had some trees they wanted to remove a few months ago, but uh, waited until we had this tree policy in place. So your suggestion about using some of the woods. Um, so there may be some coming up soon where yeah. parks might have some timber or wood um, for the stream? Yeah, the, the one on Newell Creek, um, uh, Metro owns uh, some property there uh, and uh, they have some uh, trees there that they can use for that purpose. So I, I don't think we need uh, trees on that particular site. Okay, and then also just I, um, while we were in this meeting, I sent an email to Public Works and Parks um, with your additional suggestions for um, tree or uh, for the wood as well. Yeah, so good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyone else? What are you guys up to? <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a comment for, for, for over that. You know, I'm going off. Um, I can't remember if I, I served six years on the Natural yeah. Resource Committee. Uh, some of you don't rea probably don't realize it, but when I was a city commissioner 20 years ago, I recommended the Natural Resource Committee, and we didn't have very good in interaction with the plan or the planning department at that time. <laughs> the decision was to to disband it. And when I became mayor again, I said, we want that natural resource committee back. Planning department has been wonderful. It really has. And I just simply wanted to congratulate everybody. Uh, direct, of course, uh, Laura, but uh, when we first started up, I think there were some concerns and Tony, Tony came to several of our first meetings to, to see what we were doing, why we were doing it. And I could already get the positive vibes from Tony and it's gotten better and better. Beats, Beats been with us the whole time as a staff member. And I wanna thank you guys so much for really uh, listening to what we had to say and getting getting us involved. Thank you so much, Laura and Pete. Thanks, Doug. It's been, it's been great to have such expertise on the committee too. And, uh, and your recommendations have really helped a lot of the policy in the last few years. It's been great to see that constructive dialogue. So it's been, it's been really mm. good working with you guys. It really has been. Nice. You too. <laughs> All of you guys. <laughs> Let's keep it up. Doug, when I have to write this report for the city commission, I may have ask you for some help because I that's not my kind of bailiwick for writing things like that. So get some pointers on what I should be focusing on and stuff. So what's the date, Laura, that we need to report for the city commission? Uh, one second, I'll look it up. Because I saw a couple of things. So 
Sorry, I should have checked this before. It's February 17th. So okay. their agenda got full, so it, it metered out all the um, groups. Okay. okay. Thanks. I'll try and get it done sometime early January before I have to start teaching again. <laughs> Man, I don't know how you do it. I don't either at this point. I, this semester, <laughs> that. I, you know, I, all the students were turning everything in electronically. So they'd send me emails with stuff attached and then I had to download it. And I had to, I always had, I always email my students to tell them I got something. And I say, if you don't get some email in 24 hours, email me back. But I would literally take an hour sometimes just downloading it all onto my desktop and then renaming it because they refuse to give things the names that I can actually figure. They all say the same thing. Paper one, paper one, paper one. Like, well, that's not going to give me a good. So, you know, I have to rename her and put it in a right folder. I mean, literally it took <laughs> three hours and I had like two classes of, you know, fairly oh, large classes of forever. And it was just, oh. Exponential. Spent just an incredible amount of time doing busy work, stuff like that. And then, you know, Ugh. luckily I had two TAs in my environmental science class. <clears throat> they graded all the labs for me, which was awesome. <laughs> but, yeah, that's good, boy. Um, if we don't have any more NRC member reports, uh, future agenda items. Um, I know we're, we've got a work plan that we need to take a look at for 2021. Um, and then, uh, anything that you guys want to put on the agenda, uh, or ask people for presentations about. Um, I know we've got a few presentations hanging out there from uh, various agencies for large long range projects, but like the um, Tri City Sewer, Sewer District is uh, planning on giving a presentation to us about the, uh, their project to reroute their pipe, their big pipe. Um, so I'll check back in with them and see where they're at. On their on their permitting, and then it might be time for to call them in for for a presentation. Um, anybody else have anything that you want to discuss? I got a question. When will the uh, Parkway heritage trees be coming before the? Is it coming before the city commission? Good question, Doug. Um, checking in with Kendall Reed to see where the Parks and Rec Advisory Committee decision is on that. The last meeting I was at where it was tabled because they didn't have the resolution passed yet. It, it, it didn't do anything at the last meeting. Okay, so um, as far as I'm aware, until PRAC makes a decision about that, we weren't going to take it up to the City Commission. Um, so that's that's where that's at. Yeah. Because when that, when that comes up, I think the Natural Resource Committee would want to weigh in on it a bit too. Sure, absolutely, yeah. Um, and yeah, we'll put a memorandum together that kind of summarizes all the discussions that have happened about that. Okay. I've got one more thing actually, which is the city commission at some point we'll be doing goal setting and budgeting associated with that. We have a biennium budget and it goes from, it ends, our current one ends this summer and then it'll go for two years. And so I think the question was if NRC wants to suggest any projects or provide any input on that, um, you might wanna add that to the agenda. It's January, your next meeting, it would be a good time if you wanted to suggest projects or policies or something like that. Mm, okay. That's on the 13th, uh, Pete, our next meeting. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Second Wednesday. Yeah, second Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Nancy and I have a report on the golf course. Yeah. Too. We will have a report then too. Good. We'll have a good meeting then. Excellent. All right. Well, I'm going to wish you all happy, happy holidays and rest up and a positive 2021.
Everybody <laughs> stay safe and healthy. Yeah, stay safe and healthy and stay in touch. And we'll see you soon. And Doug, thank you for your service. It's, thank you. We wouldn't be the same without you. That's very yeah, true. You, you, yeah. yeah. You got great Don't be a stranger, you. Doug. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye, guys. Good night.